This is the part of our service where believers celebrate the Lord's Supper together. The cracker symbolizes the breaking of Christ's body, and the cup symbolizes the pouring out of Christ's blood for us. This is such a special time for believers to remember and worship our God. Our scripture for this morning is 1 John 1, 1 through 4. If you don't have a Bible with you, please hold your hand up. There'll be some men coming down the aisle who would be happy to give you one. And if you don't own a Bible, please take this one with you as a gift from us. So let's pray. Father, we come to you knowing that you are all wise, that you are the one true God. You give us your word and within your word, there are promises and certainties, and we can depend on you, we can trust you, and most of all, Father, we love you. It's in your name we pray, amen. So let's read together 1 John 1, verses 1 through 4. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may also have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. In the book of 1 John, John is helping his audience recall the fundamentals of faith. John is not providing opinions or speculations. He is providing certainties of the basics of Christianity. He's using terms that are clear and leave no doubt as to the fundamental nature of these truths. He is providing essential principles reassuring believers concerning the basics of their faith. And he also wants them to have joy regarding the assurance of their faith. John starts with what was from the beginning. The word or the what in this passage is stated at the end of the first verse, the word of life. The theme of these four verses is the word of life which, of course, is the person of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ. The word of life refers to the proclamation of all there is about Christ, his person, his work, and the gospel. John is giving us something that is certain. He is saying that the word of life, he is saying the word of life is what was from the beginning. But the beginning of what? It is the beginning of the proclamation of the gospel. The beginning of apostolic proclamation of Christ. This refers to the beginning of the gospel preaching when people first heard about Jesus. What was from the beginning is a phrase that emphasizes the stability of the gospel message. Its contents have not changed. It has remained stable from the beginning. John then moves to another certainty. He wants us to know that the word of life was made manifest to our senses. John writes, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was manifested and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also. John was concerned about false teaching going on in the church. One such group were called the Gnostics. Although we don't have time to go into the many different uh, views and teachings of Gnostics, one variation of Gnosticism, even said that Christ only appeared to take on human flesh and did not possess a physical body at all. 
Thus, John is telling his readers that the word of life is someone that he experienced, someone he listened to, someone that he saw, someone that he looked at, and someone that he touched. John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John is saying that the word of life is the true manifestation of God in human flesh. He is the living, living and breathing Son of God. God became man, and divine life was manifest in human flesh. The Greek word for manifest is phanero, which means to make visible what is hidden. God was hidden until Christ and the divine life became visible. That eternal life, that word of life, was none other than the eternal life who was with the Father and which was manifested to us. Fallen man on his own could never ascend to heaven to seek eternal life, so the Son had to descend to earth to bring that life to all who would believe in him. John says in verse 3, What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. John is saying it is his responsibility to witness and proclaim the word of life. This is how John viewed his ministry. That which I personally experience, I am called to proclaim. The manifestation of Christ becomes a proclamation of the gospel, and John wanted his readers to have the same glorious knowledge that he and the other apostles had experienced. Christ manifested himself to the apostles so they could be first-hand eyewitnesses and pass on to others in the proclamation of the gospel. There's another aspect of certainty in verse 3 that you may that you may have you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is one, is with the Father and with his son Jesus Christ. The Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, which basically means partnership or participation with. Fellowship is not so much about a relational connection as it is about a real partnership. A way to understand this is that the preaching of the gospel produces faith. A person who puts their faith in Christ enters into a real partnership with other believers, with the Father, with his Son, Jesus Christ. It is a real sharing of life. John is proclaiming one more certainty in verse 4. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. Fellowship with the word of life will give you full and complete and everlasting joy. John is proclaiming a message, the gospel which, if you believe and trust in Jesus to be your savior, will result in a spiritual relationship <clears throat> with other believers and God and give you complete and everlasting joy. If you're here today and don't believe that Jesus is the incarnate son of God, we want you to know that communion is for believers only. But we are thankful that you're here at Grace Bible Church this morning. And I urge you to talk to one of the elders or there'll be someone up front to your left. Any one of us would be happy to discuss with you what it means to be a believer in Christ. I pray you won't let this opportunity pass you by. Men, Please come and serve us. Believers, please use this time to meditate on the cross of Christ, confession of sin, and the joy that you have in fellowship with your Savior. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. <clears throat>